Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, <clears throat> I worry that sometimes we have read or heard this beautiful gospel so many times, this amazing miracle so many times, that we've kind of like, oh, it's normal. But it's not a normal thing. Do you hear what the gospel, what happened today in the gospel? The Lord took five loaves, two fish, and he fed 15,000 people. That's not normal, okay? That's not a normal thing. We need to be in awe of who our Lord is. We need to be in amazement of who our Savior is. This is not a normal thing. We can't just because we read it so many times throughout the year, and we've heard the story so many times that our ears become kind of numb. Our hearts become numb. Our minds become numb to the fact that this is an awesome thing that happened here today. This is an awesome thing that happened here today. And we have to take away from it every time we read, we should be taking a new lesson that the Lord is telling us. The last time I spoke about this was not last week, the week before. Actually, we read it two weeks ago and we talked about different attitudes that were there, that were present. And what kind of attitude we should have towards meeting our Lord and what kind of attitude towards our salvation we should have. We said we should have a godly attitude. Today we're going to talk about three different lessons that we're going to take from this beautiful miracle today. Three different lessons. I want you to understand that this miracle was so great that all four Gospels mentioned it. Okay? All four Gospels talked about this great miracle and how wonderful it was. Let's look at three different lessons that are very important for us today. And I hope you have a pen and paper. Like I always tell you, it's very important to take notes. Take notes. Go back home, read it, and come back to me and tell me, Abuna, really, I didn't understand this. Or Abuna, this didn't make sense. Challenge. Challenge yourself. Challenge me. I want you to, to go back and like really enjoy what the Lord is trying to tell you because there's going to be a different message. I always say the gospel is a living word. It's not a dead word. It's not a nice story that we hear and it's over. It has to be a way of life for us. The first lesson that we see is the compassion lesson. The compassion lesson. It shows us that Jesus cares about all of our needs. Jesus cares about all of our needs. What happened here today? It says that Jesus came, Jesus came on a boat, and he had just, just if you know, what had happened is that St. John the Baptist was just executed, okay? He was just killed. And so, of course, this was his cousin. This was Jesus' cousin, and he loved him very much because he was the last prophet. This was a man that he cared for very much. So the Lord went to take some quiet time, went to grief a little bit. And what happened? Do you know what happened here? What happened? The crowd followed him, right? The crowd followed him. And what did Jesus do? Did he say, no, I need some alone time? Let me be for a little bit? What did he say? When the crowd came to him, what did he do? He took care of them, right? He took care of everything that they needed. When he had just finished, he had just given like seven different parables, okay? He had just given seven different parables and then he fed them. So first we see the compassion of our Lord to give us our spiritual food first and then he gives us our physical needs. The Lord is saying, all I care about is your spirituality, but I also care about your physical needs. I also know what you need. When the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, and His righteousness and all things will be added unto you, right? Isn't that what the Gospel says? This is exactly what happened. The Lord gave them the kingdom. He fed them spiritually first and foremost. But He did not neglect their physical needs. The Lord was going around healing the sick. Healing everyone who was that came to Him. He took care of their physical needs. He did not run away from it. The Lord is showing us that He has compassion. That He cares about every aspect of our life. The spiritual comes first, but also the physical. 
the material things. The Lord cares about those things. It's not His priority because He never preached about it, by the way. If you know your Bible well, the Lord never said, please pray for more money or pray for a better job or for, you know, never said any of those things. His goal was the salvation of the people. But He also knew that there needed to be material things taken care of. So He provided for them. He took care of them physically. He took care of them physically. We see that the Lord had great compassion. He healed the sick, fed the hungry crowd. He didn't drive them away. He didn't say no, not now. The Lord has compassion and His disciples learn to have compassion. And we as His disciples need to learn to have that same compassion in our life. The Lord is teaching us that we ourselves as His children need to have compassion. That we should go out of our way to care for the needs of others as our Lord did. The second lesson that we see is the faith lesson. The faith lesson. Jesus asks me to do the impossible to test me. Jesus asks me to do the impossible to test me. In the Gospel of St. John, in the Gospel of St. John, it clearly said that Jesus told His disciples to do the impossible to test them. He wanted to see what they were go- how they were going to react. He wanted to see what they were going to say and what they were going to do. And so the Lord does the same to us. He tests us. He says, I want to put the impossible in front of you to see how you will react. How is your faith? How is your faith? How much do you believe and trust in who I am? How much do you believe and trust in my power and my authority? And Jesus says, I'm going to test you. I'm going to test you to test your faith. I want to test your faith and see truly, do you believe in who I am? Do you believe in my power? Do you believe in my authority? Do you believe that I can do the impossible? Do you believe it? Many of us might say, yes, I believe. So then what does the Lord do? He says, let me test you. Let me test you. Let me see if you truly believe or not. Not by your words, but by your actions. Let me see by your actions if you have that faith. He wanted to see if his disciples truly had that faith. They had just been fed so much. They had seen him do so much. Now it was time to see if they had that faith, if they believed in truly who He was. Unfortunately, they weren't ready yet. Unfortunately, their faith was still still a little small, still a little weak. But know that the Lord puts the impossible in front of us to test us. To test us. I remember when I was when I was in college, I had a professor who would often, like at the beginning of class, okay, he would say, everyone clear off your desk, okay, except for like a blank sheet of paper. And we knew as soon as he said that, we were getting a quiz, okay? We knew it. As soon as he said, clear off your desk, you know, and put on a blank sheet, of, get a blank sheet of paper out, we knew he was going to give us a test, okay? We knew he was going to give us a, ca- a test. So... Sometimes I was prepared, and sometimes I was a college student who was not prepared, okay? Sometimes I wasn't prepared. And Jesus does the same thing with us today. Jesus does the same thing with us today. He says, clear your desk. Let's see your faith. He comes to us at times that we might not be ready and says, I want to see your faith. Do you believe in what I can do? Do you trust in who I am? Let me see your faith. It'll be a pop quiz. It'll be at times where I don't expect it. At times that I don't expect it. He's going to come and ask me to clear my desk. Are you ready for the test today? What do you mean? Are you ready for the test today? Sometimes it's when we're not ready. Sometimes it's when we are sick or we're tired or we're going through some difficult times in life. The Lord is saying, I want to see your faith today. 
We couldn't tell that professor, no, 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 I'm not feeling well today, let me not take that. Could we say that to him? No. Couldn't tell the professor, no. Same way we can't tell God, no. We can't say no. We can walk away and fail the test, right? We can do that. We can fail the test. But we have to accept it. And either we're going to be ready or we're not. Either we're going to show our faith portray our faith in our actions, or when He comes to test me, I won't be prepared. And I'll fail. And I'll fail. In James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, what does it say? It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know testing of your faith develops perseverance. Testing of your faith develops perseverance. The God, God wants to test our faith so that we can persevere, so that we can be stronger, so that we can be made better, so that we can be made truly in the image of His Son. That's why He tests us. To say, Lord, I believe in who You are. And when I overcome these little challenges, when the big challenges come, I'll be prepared. I'll be ready. The Lord tests us so that when the bigger challenges come and face us, we'll be prepared. Nothing will blow me away. Nothing is going to destroy my house because my house is built on a rock. My house is built on a rock. A solid rock. No matter what storm comes, I trust in the Lord. I trust in His power. I trust in His authority. I trust that He can make the impossible possible. If you look, if you look at what happened today, we see that there's, there's a few people here in the crowd. First is we have some people who are what we call feelers, okay? Feelers. And feelers, usually, usually they dress their problems with their emotion, okay? People who address their problems with their emotions. So, and the way that you can recognize these people is that they usually start by saying, I feel that, okay? When you ask them something, they say, I feel that we should do this or do that, okay? These are called feelers. And I'll tell you why these categories are important. And the problem with feelers is that their feelings usually <laughs> lead them in the wrong direction. Their feelings usually lead them in the wrong direction. The other type of people that we see on the scene today are people who are figurers. They try to figure everything out. They address the problem with their mind. Okay. They address the problem with their mind. And we can recognize these people when you ask them a question, they say, I think. Right? So, first group of people are feelers. I feel that. Second people are figurers. I think we should deal with it this way. They're usually the calculators. Okay? They're usually the ones that pull out the calculator as soon as you ask them some kind of, you know, equation or a problem or something they whatever or some kind of you know a problem that they have in their life well the calculator will lead us in the right direction okay they're figures they say i think and so what we saw today who were the feelers do you think who do you think the feelers were all the disciples some of the disciples were feelers right some of the disciples were feelers. Why? Why do we know that? Why do we know that? What did their feelings say? Send these guys away, right? Send them away. They're hungry. We feel that they should go, right? So some of the disciples were feelers. The figures, some of them were figures. What did they say? Do you remember? 
We hear this gospel. Yeah, two, we have 200 denarii, right? It's still not enough for everyone, correct? They tried to figure out the problem. We think that it's not going to work. We think that it's not realistic, right? So we have the feelers and the figures. I, wanna, I want you to hold on to that for a second. Because we're going to see the third group of people. Okay? The third group of people that fall under the third lesson. So we have the feelers and the figures. It's important to understand under the faith lesson, we can't be feelers or thinkers or figurers. Okay? Because under the faith lesson, the Lord says, make feed 15,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Impossible. As a feeler, impossible. As a figurer, impossible. Right? As a feeler, no way. As someone who calculates, definitely no way. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Abuna, it's not possible. We cannot feed 15,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Can't happen. Whether you're a feeler or a figurer, it just cannot work. Right? The faith lesson is God is saying, I want to see, are you? Which one are you? Which one are you? Are you a feeler or a figure? Because usually we, one of us, some, all of us fall under those two categories. Either we're feelers or we're figurers. But when it comes to the faith lesson, the Lord doesn't want us to be feelers or figurers. And He's going to come and say, can you do this? Here's the problem that you are facing. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to feel or are you going to figure? And we see that both of those were wrong. With God, they were wrong. With the Lord, they were wrong. The third lesson that we need to understand with God is the abundance lesson. The abundance lesson. What was the abundance lesson? When I give Jesus the only, because that's what they said, we only have, right? We only have five loaves and two fish. When I give Jesus the only, all that I have, He turns my poverty into plenty. He turns my poverty into plenty. The disciples said, we are here, only five, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus said what? Bring them to me. Bring them to me. You see what word they used? What word did they use? Only. We only have. We only have five loaves of bread and two fish. What did Jesus say? Bring them to me. Jesus is saying, bring me your only. Bring me your only. And what will I do? Ayman's the only one answering. Ayman's the only one awake today. Provide you with abundance. Exactly. I want you guys to be engaging. Okay, I like engaging. Huh? It wasn't theirs. What wasn't theirs? But they said, this is all that we have. The lad came and gave it and said, it's only five loaves and two fish. That's it. It's only five loaves and two fish. But God is saying, give me your only and I will make it into plenty. It's the abundance lesson. Give me what you are thinking. Give me what you are trying to figure out. What you are feeling. And I will make it a reality. And not only, not only will I give you what you need, but I'll give you more than you need. 
I'll give you more than what you need. So he said there are feelers and there are figurers. But the third way is that we have a shortage of, they're called faithers. <laughs> faithers. Faithers. People who say, like the lad, right? Like this little lad. I, by the way, when we were in Connecticut this last weekend, um, one of the fathers there wrote a whole book. A whole book about this lad, okay? About this young boy. And he was trying to find out something about who this young boy was. Like, and and, I, and I, I was so amazed because he, this little lad is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Because here is this little boy, and he says, Jesus, here, take this. So when I was talking to Abuna, Abuna was saying, after this like encounter, this young lad was probably never the same again. So he could never find anything about this lad. There's nothing really written about this lad. You know, like some fathers or some people will say that he became a bishop, but there's nothing concrete. So Abuna wrote a whole book, okay, and it's a pretty thick book, about his meditations on what happened with this lad afterwards. Okay? And I thought that was amazing, because if you think about it, this lad, this little boy, okay, this little boy had all the faith in the world. Not his disciples, not his apostles who said only, but this little lad. He is a faither. We're going to call him a faither. Full of faith. Not a feeler. Not a feeler. Not a figurer. A faither. Someone who came and said, Lord, here, take this. He didn't say, I think you can, or I feel that you can. No, he said, Lord, take it. You see that? Here comes a little boy. That's why the Lord said, unless you are like what? Unless you are, I want you to answer, Amen. I wasn't telling you not to answer. <laughs> unless you are like these children, you will not enter the kingdom. He was saying, unless you have the faith of these children who trust in who I am, Trust in the Lord. You will not enter in the kingdom of God. Unless you are like this lad today, who will not be a feeler or a figure, you will not enter the kingdom of God. The Lord wants us to be true men and women of faith. And when we become men and women of faith, He will give us in abundance. He will give us more than we can ever ask for. More than we ever need. Give Him your only. Give Him the impossible. And watch Him do amazing things. The first lesson that we learn is the compassion lesson, right? The compassion lesson. The second lesson the faith lesson. Third, the abundance lesson. Faith, compassion, abundance. Go home today. Read this beautiful gospel. Meditate on these beautiful words. Ask the Lord, Lord, I don't want to be a feeler or a figure. I want to be a faither. I want to be full of faith, trusting in who you are. Trusting in who you are. He's on the altar with us today. Maybe you're someone who's always full of emotions. I feel, I feel, I feel. Or maybe you're someone who's always a calculator. I think, I think, I think. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want to be a man or a woman of faith. Trust in you. No matter how big the mountain is. No matter how big the mountain is. No matter how big the problem is before me. With you, it's possible. Teach me to be like this lad. Teach me to be like this boy. This little boy who is pure in heart and gave you everything and watched you do great things. 
That's what we want to do today. Lift up your heart and ask the Lord to give you that faith, to give you that compassion, so that at the end, your life can be filled with abundance from Him. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.